All right, today we're going to dive into a project we've talked about here on the network before, and that is Place War and kind of the evolution of where Place War is go going. If you haven't watched our show, you want to stay tuned for this one because we really get into play to earn gaming deep with a CEO and co founder of Place War today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Joining me today is Ms. Myrtle Ann Ramos. Great to have you back on the show, Myrtle. Hello, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year 2022. <laughs> It's going to be a good one too, I think, in play to earn. Lots of activity in the space. Just this week, we've seen all kinds of acquisition news. There's uh, obviously a ton of play to earn uh, activations happening in terms of users, growth, all that kind of stuff. I want to jump into Place War for some of our people that maybe are new to the channel. Give us a kind of a rundown quickly on what Place War is for the for that audience. So basically, guys, if you're not familiar with the play to earn, uh, best example is Axie. It boomed last year. So Place War is a metaverse ever since Facebook actually said they're meta. Uh, they're going metaverse. So um, we're going to deploy in the multi-chain, which definitely allows more users. The purpose of it, guys, is there's a comparison between the metaverse and non-metaverse play to earn games, which exist in the space in the cryptocurrency world. So basically, Place War, you'll definitely enjoy it. The inspiration came from our place and Gunbound. So crazy tanks in China, but yep. uh, the most uh, familiar or famous is uh, is actually uh, gun bound, sorry. <laughs> I like it. It's one of the, I think, one of the emerging uh, play to earn that we've continued to track. We've obviously we've been watching this project for quite some time. It continues to rank in our top 20 play to earn uh, overall sentiment, also just in general in the amplific amplification. So it's had some movement in terms of the token itself. But let's get into the game itself and really kind of rolling out because once this really gets launched, I think the play to earn options here and what Place War will do is going to be pretty interesting. You had a recent holdback on the launch of the play to earn game. What was the reason for the hold on the launch? So uh, there's a lot of people asking, but of course there's a lot of people who doesn't understand technical uh, terms, right? So here I'll provide the best explanation. So we found some potential technical problems that can affect in the long term sustainability of the project. Of course, we don't want to launch a faulty project or if yeah. ever that will happen in some issues with other play to earn games out there. We want to be careful because we want to deliver a good product to the community, especially for the players who's really waiting for this uh, game. So for the integrity and security purposes as well. We actually hired a lot of um, white hat hackers to attack the uh, platform itself for us to actually not experience those play to earn games who's actually been attacked, been attacked yeah. recently. Yeah. So we don't want that to happen. So beefing up the security, um, how long do you think this is going to take before you see a potential rollout or an actual launch? So it's not really a major one, but it comes with the emission of the rewards. We want it more sustainable and we want to actually provide uh, stability, good ROI when it comes to the community members and players that we have. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I like to hear it when, uh, when founders, CEOs talk about security because this is one of the things that we continue to see as a problem in play to earn it, especially as we start to evolve. Obviously, we saw the situation that happened here re recently with the Alluvium and uh, SILV. So there are scenarios like that that I think will continue to kind of plague the industry, especially as we see growth continue to happen. So that's good that you guys are doing that. Are you thinking end of January that this might roll out early February? What are your thoughts on, on timeline? So the timeline for this, I'm actually having continuous meetings with a lot of uh, developers and the partners. So uh, they told me it's late January. So oh, last that's great. Very cool. Well, good. Then that's going to be excellent. Here's the next question, and that is getting into Placidonia for many of you that maybe are watching land sales are, are a big factor in play to earn. We're seeing it in all sorts of different projects. Placidonia is kind of that element of uh, Place War. When would we see some gameplay 
that we can see inside uh, Placidonia? Because I think that would be something that the audience is really looking for. Because this one is really the unique uh, feature of Place War. I totally understand because I'm more excited than you are, guys. So basically, the land of every different rarity level when it comes to Place Donia or Placidonia, we call it in the Philippines. So the rarity level would have different resources for production, location, access to certain certain types of builds in various places and sizes of defender deployment. So it's actually like, uh, if you'll think of the game Clash of Clans, mm -hmm. so think of it, that's the whole idea. It's just like invading each other. So imagine um, there's a lot of Bitcoin supporters right yeah so imagine that they're gonna collaborate inside place donia and then you can see solana logo bitcoin mm -hmm. logo sure it's also for the artist at the same time so it's not just limited when it comes to the gamers or play to earn nft enthusiast out there it's basically about collaboration when it comes to the gameplay that we have it's not targeting a specific niche when it comes to the land system that we have yeah so your land system rarity classes pixel lands common rare epic legendary so those are you know we've seen these scales these variation levels obviously that's going to create value uh, propositions yes. for you know acquiring this as a pixel owner what kind of constructs can i put within a pixel of themselves can i what's the use case or utility aspect of that so it's really cool um, I'm, I'm also actually thinking of the best analogy of Farmville when it comes to the land oh, system okay. that we have. So you can build production facilities to produce non-NFT resources that we have inside. So you mm. can definitely go ahead and potentially uh, use for equipment such as crafting. The one that we call inside Place Donia or Place War is actually crafting. So if you compare mm -hmm. that in Axie, um, it's actually called breeding with, for them, right? right? So in place war, we call it crafting. And then we'll have five days inspection as well for you to be able to craft NFTs. Yeah, there's a lot of people who bought NFTs, by the way. So I'm really excited. Yeah. It sounds like this is going to be a big part of it for sure. And, to, and I think that has kind of evolved, especially in play to earn. We're, we're seeing more and more NFT digital assets mm -hmm. that have become such a big part of the ecosystem. Eventually, we'll see most likely these as collectibles, things of that nature. What kind of resources do you think uh, will be harvested in these pixels? What other things that we might see that would generate potential value? So we have two parts here. So it could be non-NFT resources and also gear tokens, okay. you will tanks, tech NFTs. You can see that in the wiki wiki that we have so you can check it out by going to placewar.io and then yes uh, once you'll be able to do that the highlight of this guys is what makes us different is the radar system that we have mm -hmm. as well so yeah. the radar system it's going to be random because we're going to use like um, a chain link when it comes to the rewards i don't want to be technical enough when it comes to the blockchain itself because we're targeting mass adoption, right? Mm -hmm. So the best explanation is for you to be able to loot that randomly inside while playing either in player versus environment, player right. versus play player, Guild Wars, or the pixel system that we have. You'll be able to loot that, uh, the radar that we have. And then once you'll be able to have that, the player will have the chance for his earnings to be times five. So we're integrating DeFi inside our game yeah. as well. This is something, you know, with DeFi, that's something interesting and, and kind of intriguing to me is that DeFi, a lot of projects are starting to look at going this direction with uh, decentralized finance rolling into mm -hmm. play to earn. And there's going to be other aspects of utilization and utility, I think, in a lot of this evolution of where you see this going. I, I want to ask you about that here as we get into the interview, but I want to go into the idea of these um, support tokens, uh, so to speak. If you watch, I think it was a recent blog post, Axie was talking about SLP, basically saying, hey, it's not sustainable. 
there's going to have to be some things that we change uh, and be able to evolve into the land sale to create multi-utility, to create sustainable you know, actions inside a support token like that. How is Place War doing that differently with gear? Just I saw so people, that actually. Yeah. <laughs> so how would you guys I, I, I saw that, that? Ar article. So I don't want to compare, but of course, when it comes to uh, for the people to understand what's happening. So what we do differently when it comes to the other token that we have, gear token is actually needed for place war than SLP and Axie. Right. So it's not about um, bad mouthing about Axie, okay? So gear is used in crafting for all of the NFTs, not just one NFT like Axie breeding, but it's mm. necessary to upgrade your equipment. It's necessary for you to be able to get higher rewards in player versus environment that we have. Gotcha. For you to be, for you to be able to survive in the PVP as well. So yeah. the floor requirement when it comes to the firepower, you can see that as well. It's part of the uh, aspect. Sorry, mm, aspect of uh, place war. So in that sense, you really need to source non NFT resources inside our game. When it comes to crafting, where only gear token is basically basically can be used. So yes, yeah. there's a lot of utility when it comes to gear token, and it's gonna be better. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I always recommend to our viewers and even to you know the play to earn teams that watch our channel and and talk about this is when you get into these support ecosystems like SLP or in your case gear, there's a key element here and that is multi use of utility to really kind of create a very robust ecosystem in play to earn. This is going to be a requirement, I think, of a lot of projects in the future. In fact, I think a lot of people will most likely be graded on their project based on their utility token and how that's being utilized in there. So congrats to what you guys are doing in terms of expanding its use case uh, for sure. Let's get into the situation of onboarding users because this is one thing that I think will hold, black, hold back play to earn gaming if we don't see easy on-ramps for non-crypto enthusiasts. For us, to, and I was just looking at the numbers like on Zynga, we just cut a video on this and I was surprised because if you looked at the heyday of Zynga mobile users, it was around almost 300 million back in their initial, initial launch phase um, when they first got really connected into Facebook. That of course fell off dramatically and then they've started a resurgence here in mobile gaming. Now they're up to around 180 three or almost 200 million monthly active users. That's pretty impressive for, you know, Zynga now, but if you look at, there's, you know, dozens if not hundreds of good mobile gaming projects out there. And if you take that and convert that into play to earn, we're going to see that kind of growth in the play to earn category as well, which means lots of users coming this way. What are the things you guys are doing to make it easier for users to onboard? So basically, when it comes to the structure and the app, so it's Axie like. So, of course, Axie is the ins inspiration of all games. I do salute them when it comes to helping many people. So, the login for this is actually separated. What makes us different? So, from wallet control to scholarship programs is what we call in Axie, right? So, yeah. us is boot camp. So, when it comes to military, of course, boot camp. We want it to be called it different. So yes, it is easily established. We also plan to provide stake to get free tank in later development. And basically it's exciting. So allowing more new players to try place war at near zero cost without any anything. So free to play, uh, potentially this stake would be- Stake to get free tank yeah, actually is right. the concept. Yeah. So. That's an interesting concept. I like that. Will that launch with the launch of the game? Um, no, in the later so, de development. Seeing yeah. that in in next devs. Okay, very cool. All right. So so in lieu of that, how much would I need right now to start playing? It's I'm brand actually two hundred seventy dollars. So okay. you'll be able to get three tanks already. And that three tanks will be able to produce each tank six. So there's also a lifespan. So I can double my tank production uh, based on $270. And 
and then start to use yes. how how will I look at uh, the potential ecosystem? Have you guys put together any sort of forecast or things of that nature, like the guilds are doing? Do you see guilds really coming into this and really playing into a big component, much like what we've seen in some of the other projects? Basically, that's what I'm going to answer uh, for later, actually, for me to be able to entice the community. So mm. there's 200 guilds who signed up with Placewalk. And that's wow. actually the truth. <laughs> we're overwhelmed at the same time because we're not doing any paid marketing at all. And yeah. then uh, later, there's a lot of people inviting me for interviews. So there's a lot, but I declined because I got sick last holiday. So I need to rest, of course. So when it comes to the partnerships, we secured 30 plus guilds partnered with Place War alone. And it's very uh, like um, overwhelming. So you'll be able to see there's a lot of people who's going to stream Place War, who's going to talk a lot about Place War. Yeah, yeah. Could become and one of those really cool. it's actually 1.2. When it comes to the NFT sales, by the way, we actually closed uh, 1.2 million worth okay. of uh, dollars when it comes to, of course, selling those tanks. It's just like, right. mother, I, all, I actually told my mother, mother, I'm selling tanks now. <laughs> I told her <laughs> la last month about that. I just want to make it fun when it comes to this conversation, Paul. So, yeah. So, I, I told my father as well, Dad, I made 1.2 million worth. But, yeah, basically, the reason for this is the market maker that we have is really cool when it comes to mm -hmm. the sustainability. And I really trust them, especially the developers. Yeah. With the uh, with the backers that we have with LB Capital and Crypto.com, I just I just actually just done a meeting with them <laughs> for the future uh, marketing that's going to happen really really soon. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Let's talk about Guild War mode and how much are you mm -hmm. expecting a typical wager to be? Because with that, that's kind of a new. Well, I should say it's a different kind of feature inside Place War than some of the other projects. It's going to be cool. It's 10 versus 10, Paul. It's going to be like a, a party <laughs> inside a game. So just imagine um, when it comes to the pool price, I don't want for every, anyone to uh, actually expect anything. But when it yeah. comes to the earning, so I'll just give a computation. So per day, uh, 10, uh, around maybe roughly 10 to $20 per day. That's not bad. And once you'll be able to get the radar, just imagine once you'll activate that, it's going to be for 24 hours mm -hmm. and then 20 times uh, five. So basically, it's $100 a day if you'll get the radar system that we have. Yeah. So again, this starts to lay into a real play to earn economy. We will see, you know, mass adoption in this. We've seen, already started to see this. Obviously, Axie has been one of one of the big key things that's influenced this market. And we continue to see that really playing out in a lot of different projects. Myrtle, when you look at the rest of the industry right now, especially for early 2022, we continue to see a lot of good signs around play to earn, but also in general around blockchain adoption in the gaming ecosystem. How long before you think we'll see real conversion between AAA and mainstream gaming with blockchain gaming? Do you think 22 is going to be the year or do you think we're going to be another year out? Don't take my opinion against uh, against me, guys. This is my own personal uh, opinion and I'm entitled to it. <laughs> so when it comes to my own take for th this one, there's a lot because, you know, I'm speaking to one of the largest. Uh, I don't want to tell it because I don't want to have a bad juju, but we're <laughs> actually partnered now with uh, a good DAO. So this DAO is going to basically bridge everything, the traditional and then the, the play to earn in crypto economy. So this game developer, there's a lot. It's already massive when it comes to the partnerships. AFK DAO is what we call it. You, you just go ahead and uh, search AFK DAO and we're partnered with them already. And just imagine the revolution of uh, NFT leasing.
For example, yeah. there's a lot of people who can't afford to invest in mm -hmm. NFTs. So AFK DAO will be the bridge for that. So they made their own IP, intellectual property, yeah. to convert the ERC-721 to ERC-6410. It's just like in a relationship, the best analogy, Paul, um, it's just like you are in a relationship, but not. You don't have any ownership of that NFT, but right. you can rent it. So it's going to give yeah. privilege to a lot of people, developers, players, guilds. So yeah. it's it's a revolution that's going to happen. Yeah, I think you just hit on it. That's a we are seeing some technology advancements in the DAO side of things where we are, and potentially seeing a kind of really kind of a new evolution of how you, NFT utilization could be used, whether it's NFT tokenization, the utilization of things like a lease, so to speak. There are financial NFTs now starting to play into this that we've seen instruments being developed on these packets and, and really kind of creating uh, kind of a new angle on how this might roll out. So congrats to you guys on if this deal comes together. This could be a big deal because of the fact that we will see a convergence of the two markets, I think, uh, coming yes. very fast. Are you still seeing... Just a fun the... fact. Yeah, go ahead. Just a fun fact. Um, we're going to be partnered with a big known exchanges, by the way. <laughs> very cool. I like that. That well, that's that's the next big step for you guys for sure. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be like loud without any substance when it comes to the to our development because I'm different. Mm -hmm. I know I'm different. Um, I have my own opinion, and of course, with this, it's going to be a revolution either yeah. way. And yeah. yes, it's exciting. Hey Myrtle, you obviously you based in Singapore. We're starting to see more and more uh, game companies and play to earn, especially really developing in Asia. Is there one hot pocket that seems to be getting all the developers? I've seen projects in Korea starting to percolate, Vietnam starting to percolate, and then obviously Singapore and the Malay Peninsula. What are you guys seeing in terms of the local communities uh, in terms of game development companies? That's the one that I mentioned to you earlier before your question. So yep. they're a big company and we're planning to actually be partnered with them. It's really traditional. I don't want to say the name yet, but they've made a lot of games, which is very well known ever since mm. 1990s. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good news then. I'm so, I'm so glad we had you back on the show. Uh, we're looking forward to the launch of the game. It's going to be fun, I think, for us to continue to analyze What's happening with Place War? Definitely keep you close as things roll out. Let us know if you've got any gameplay footage that you want to reveal. We're happy to take that in and do a, a, a touch up on it for sure. Sure, I'll go ahead and send if ever the developers is ready because I told them not to. We want actually a surprise for the community. We want it that way. I don't Excellent. care about the fooders or any haters. But yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna keep building. And That's of course, job. we're going to revol revolutionize the GameFi market. Not everyone like is it. perfect, but of course, guys, to the community who's going to watch this, I know the market is down right now. Just huddle, what we call it in the crypto space. Just believe. And one uh, quote about a founder, uh, I saw it in one Co Cointelegraph's post. Instead of uh, speculating in the project or bashing someone, just go ahead and believe in the revolution. Because, you yeah. know, helping each other here, it's 2022 and yeah, it's still like happening it. in this. Yeah, it's 2022. Just help each other because, you know, guys, you'll never know. <laughs> I like it. I believe in the revolution. That should be on a T-shirt. Yeah. Believe in the revolution. It's the technology. It's the te technology and the revolution. I'm not in it for the ROI, but it's the revolution that can help a lot of unbanked countries and also people who is really worthy to be recognized in the whole yeah, world. For sure. Myrtle, it's been great having you back in on the show today. Thank you so much for stopping in. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paul, and God bless everyone, and stay safe. All right. Okay, you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now. Thanks again for stopping in over there. Did you know that over on Spotify, you can actually start giving us star ratings? It's a big thing. Make sure and do that if you're listening in on Spotify right now. It's been able to get us into the top 10 podcast. TechPath Crypto, you definitely want to subscribe and, of course, give us some ratings over there. If you have not jumped in over here on the YouTube channel, 
this is the place. You'll catch great interviews like with Myrtle and many other CEOs, devs around the industry and blockchain technology, what we're seeing in play to earn and all that good stuff right here on the channel. So just search Paul Barron Network. You'll find us. It's easy. Make sure and like the videos and subscribe. Hit the bell because that's going to give you notifications when we go live. And if you want to hit me up, it's out on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.